Hello my friends, my name is Lindsay and I run the blog Books for Christian Girls and welcome to or welcome back to the little corner of the internet where I talk mainly about Christian fiction. Today it is Christian fiction and clean fiction all under the umbrella of fantasy. I don't really have truly, well okay I have one sci-fi book on here but the rest is really fantasy and dystopian and I've got fairy tale retellings, I've got steampunk. I have all kinds of lovely books to talk about today. So whether you have never read fantasy before, you're a new fantasy reader and learning what you like, or if fantasy is your favorite genre, I hope some of these will catch your eye. I am surrounded with piles on the floor of lots and lots. Book Outlet just emailed me. Now why would they do a thing like that? Anyway, I have tons of books all over here. I've got them in different categories, different genres, if you will, but if you are new to the fantasy genre and you're not sure where to start, feel free to watch this video, but I'm actually going to do a separate little section specifically for those who just want to kind of dip their toes into fantasy here at the end of this video. I'm going to talk about everybody and then there's been a few I think would work really good for those who are new to fantasy. I got into fantasy books a couple of years ago and I've been enjoying finding what I like and also figuring out what doesn't work for me. So one thing you're not going to see on this list is spice. I don't read spice books. Suggestive sexual content that's not on this channel and that will never be on this channel. I also don't like a lot of cursing and then I've also learned odd little thing. I don't really like portal fantasy books. They make no sense to me. Like normal fantasy, okay, I can try to wrap my head around it, but portal fantasies, I just can't do it. So there's none of those on this list, but this is a pretty good list. So you know, we're just going to start with clean fiction that I really don't have a place to put elsewise. My hair is also wet. We're just going to ignore that because it will probably be dry by the end of this video. And it's supposed to rain, so our lighting might go in and out, but, you know, we're just going to go. We're going to fangirl. We're going to talk about books. Let me know as I discuss about these books if any of them have caught your eye. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of these. Do we have similar taste? Let me know. Let's just chat in the comments. It'll be so much fun. But then also, if you see any on this list that you're like, oh, if you like this book, you also like this book, let me know. I am trying to read more fantasy. I feel a little hypocritical as I say that though because I've been in a contemporary YA mood lately. So a little, little hypocritical of me to make this video right now, but I got some great books. My bookshelves, you can't really tell what a disarray they're in because I've cropped the camera just a little bit in, but they're in a, they're in a good disarray. They're in a good disarray. So let's start with ones that don't really fit into any other category. We're just gonna get started. Let's go! Actually, I just lied. I'm sorry. One quick note though is that I'm going to be linking all of my reviews to these down in the description. So if you want to know about any of the content or anything. And then I think I'm also going to do somewhere on the screen when I'm talking about a book, if it's one of my all time favorite fantasy books, I'm going to put something on the screen, whether it be like a medal, a ribbon, an award. I don't know what. I haven't figured that out yet, but that's editing Lindsay's problem. So I'm just going to put something on the screen when I talk about them. So you can know those are my favorites. I'll probably do a favorite fantasy video at some point, but I thought we would just do a big master list of fantasy book recommendations to start us off with. So let's now let's begin. So now that all my little disclaimers and notes are out of the way, let's begin with books that don't necessarily fit in any other genre. Because I have this like very narrowed down. I've got clean fiction, steampunk, dystopian, superheroes, magic-ish, sci-fi-ish, non-magical, middle grade, cozy fantasy, allegory-ish, fairy tale, and then we're gonna have our, if you're brand new to fantasy, here's a few recommendations. So I'm not quite sure where to put these. One of these could probably, well, these could kind of all fit under the magical category, but I'm, I'm not gonna put them there. I'm gonna put them here. So, so in us off, we're going to have Assassin of Fire and Sacrifice by Mary Meckham. So this is Enemies to More, which isn't really my favorite thing. I know that's super common in romanticy books, I can take it or leave it. It's not my favorite, but this one is when she has been sent to kill him. He is the crown prince of another country, and she is able to get into this country because of heritage and lineage and family stuff, and it was just so much fun. I tabbed this copy up. This was a buddy read, and me and the girls in the group chat were just like, oh, oh, oh. it was great. It was so much fun. We were just giggling and tickled pink over their banter. It was fantastic and it was really, really good. There was actually a special edition hardback that I own, but I've held that one up in other videos, so I thought I would hold up the paperback for this video. And I was so, 
so pleasantly surprised, like completely surprised how much I enjoyed it. And I think all of the girls in the Buddy Read were shocked. I enjoyed it too so much. But the banter just made this book to me. So if you like The Enemies to More, if you like uh, not really marriage of convenience, arranged marriage, but then she's an assassin that's been sent to kill him. If that sounds like your vibe, or even if it doesn't, and you're like, you know, I want something different, maybe check this book out. I was very, very pleasantly shocked by it. We're gonna start our stack off. Oh, y'all can, well, y'all can kind of see it. Okay. My next book, I have tried to explain five times, and I feel like I'm just like, like I'm not doing great on it. So I'm gonna try once again, and hopefully this will be my final take. That would be Vivid, though, by Ashley Bustamante. This is book one in the Color Theory series, and it's actually a trilogy. Book three just released this year, and I haven't read it yet, but I plan to read it very soon. In this world, they draw all their powers and abilities come from color, but because those who are able to draw on yellow can control other people's minds, and you know, mind controlling, not great stuff, that color's been straight up banned. Now, they are on the hunt for this mysterious young man, you know where this is going, who is a yellow a yellow color user. Yellow color user? Is that? I don't remember if that was the term they used, but basically he can use the color yellow. And our main girl is very, you know, I don't want to say she's the princess of this school, but she is, you know, got really high expectations have been placed on her because of her abilities. And so when she meets him in the woods, thankfully it's not a horror novel because that could have gone in a whole separate direction, but she meets him and learns that things might not be what the government says. So, I have enjoyed this series so far. I'm looking forward to reading book three very soon. Another book for this category, it's kind of going to be my last one, I think, for this category, and then we'll move on into the more specific genres, is going... I keep getting emails from book websites. Book Outlet emailed me earlier, and now I'm getting one from Thorpe Books. This is mean. This is mean. Anyway, my next book would be The Legendary Inge. I still don't know how to pronounce this name. It was like a 4.75 star book, and I still don't know how to pronounce her name. It's short for Ingrid, so maybe The Legendary Inge. But the E is throwing me, so I'm not sure. And it's by Kate Stradling. This book was the one that made me realize, oh my goodness, wait a second, I can like fantasy books and give them really high ratings. Because I was blown away by this book. This is about a main girl named Ingrid, and she's kind of the main provider for her family with multiple little siblings. Which also, my tabs, a lot of these, like yes, a lot of these are about her siblings because her siblings, the twin brothers, oh, they were great, like little, little uh, Dennis the Menaces, if you will, but they were great. And I just love seeing big family interactions. That's one of my favorite things to read about in fiction books. So that just was an extra little nice little cherry on top of the story for me. Basically, there has been this monster that has been plaguing her country, her village. She's out in the woods. Here comes the monster. She wasn't going to, like, attack it or anything, but she does. And she's able to kill this monster. None of the king's men have been able to kill this monster, but she was able to do it. Go, girl, go. And so the king has her brought to hit. Um, and he says, I'm going to adopt you as my son and you can marry my daughter. Yeah, little problem with that, Mr. King, sir. She's a girl. And so she basically just gets thrusted into this royal life and she has a brooding bodyguard knight, which their banter was great. You're gonna, I like banter, okay? You're gonna see potentially a theme. I feel like that's, mm, well, actually the... This one, An Assassin of Fire and Sacrifice, those are going to be the ones that have the best banter, in my opinion. If I'm recalling correctly, I think I'm recalling correctly. And it was just so much fun. Yes, there is magic, but it's more on the hereditary side, if I remember right. And I was just kind of blown away. Got blown away. If there was a special edition hardback of this book, I would have bought it. I'm just saying. Like, I enjoyed it that much. It's always great when I get to start off a video with some favorite books. It's great. So we're going to move on into steampunk. I've got a duology and then a standalone. So my standalone is going to be Mechanical Heart by Sarah Pennington. This is a very light Rapunzel retelling. So let's just pop that out real quick. And there is also no romance in this book. And now some of y'all might be like, oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, honestly, I would have really liked to see romance in this book. But, but... The main guy is one of the best princes I've ever read, and it was just so nice and refreshing to have, like, friendship 
in that relationship. I believe it's a standalone. I don't think the author is planning to continue the world anymore, which is kind of disappointing because I really enjoyed it. But this is about our main girl, Bryn, and she has been locked away in this clock tower for years, and because of the clocks, she has gone deaf. So she communicates with anyone with American Sign Language, or ASL, or I guess just maybe not American Sign Language, because it's a fantasy world. So just sign language? I guess just sign language. And then one day, the princess of the kingdom notices there's someone in the clock tower. So her older brother, the crown prince, who is one of the best crown princes I think I've ever read. He was so smart and just so brilliant. And then we got like the parliament kind of scenes and like the debates and everything. It was fascinating. I, if you like political intrigue and just like seeing the behind the scenes of like running a kingdom and all that, this might really interest you. I really liked it. So our main prince boy, he goes to the clock tower and friendships happen and it was just really interesting and of course there's the villains they have to defeat and you know all that kind of things. This I feel like is a hidden gem. The cover isn't my favorite, I will admit, but the story inside is really fun. It's actually available on Kindle Unlimited. Quite a few of these I feel like are actually might be, a, maybe almost half of these books I'm going to talk about today are on Kindle Unlimited. So. I would recommend checking out this one though because it was just really nice and different and fun and also had a lot of moments because it's like got that alchemy I think that's how you say that with the blood alchemy and all that kind of stuff I'm probably not saying that right I am probably not saying that right but it has a lot of the making you think of what would your perspective be what would your opinion be in this world about this topic and I really like when books make me think about what would I do if I was in the character's shoes, about like a serious matter like that. I like books that do that, and this book definitely did. My next series is a duology, and it's still steampunk, and that would be Secrets in the Mist and Blood Secrets by Morgan L. Bussey. This is the Sky World duology, and it is about Cass, who is an airship diver, so she jumps off of these ships into this mysterious mist, and in this world, this mysterious mist can kind of, it kills people, and then their bodies are kind of just like left walking around kind of like zombies which sounds way scarier than I recall it being so hmm, maybe not for those who don't like that kind of thing I wasn't overly bothered by it but it was very interesting because this mist is rising so as the mist is rising everybody's trying to move up but then you've got the very rich powerful people that have the very top of the mountain and don't want the lower class to be moving on up into their area so you've got the class differences and then our main guy is a scientist and it was very interesting i overall enjoyed this series pretty well and i need more steampunk books in my life in all reality i need more steampunk books so let me know if you have any clean recommendations the author has another duology that's steampunk but i didn't really care for that duology much so I've read those but I need other ones. I honestly should have started this video with this stack because this is my dystopian stack and fun fact dystopian is what got me in to fantasy like that was kind of my pipeline where I kept trying it but nothing was really hitting it for me until a couple of years ago where I just read a bunch of fantasy books and honestly it was because of the legendary ing I read that one and I was just like wow this is really good I didn't know I could enjoy fantasy books that much so that was kind of the ones that made me open up to more fantasy, but dystopian is what got me into the genre to begin with. So, we're gonna go with my very first dystopian series, and that would be the Anomaly Trilogy by Chris McGee. Did you expect this? If you have been on my channel any amount of time, you already know this series has my heart. Book one is Anomaly, and then we have book two, Revolutionary, book three, Luminary. You might read these and go, Lindsay, that is like the very stereotypical dystopian plotline, evil government, different girl, taking down evil government. I don't care. It is OG. It is original. I like it, okay? I accept no complaints. Anyway, our main girl is Thalia Mathali, and she is the her pod. So basically, like, these generations have been made, scientifically made, and they've got, like, one person that does like this and one person that does this and one does this and she is their musician because music relieves stress and then she's starting to question things and have emotions and that's not supposed to happen and it just sets off the whole trilogy if you want to talk about a love triangle it has it it was no competition in my brain who she was supposed to end up with 
but it was it's you know this has just got a special place in my heart because it is a series that got me started in dystopian so once I read that trilogy I actually waited for book three to release which book three released when like I remember being on pins and needles waiting for this book 2014 yep so I, it's been around, but it's fantastic. Once I read that, though, I was kind of like, hang on, I need more dystopian books. And I had honestly no interest in the very, like, secular mainstream ones. And I still don't, ironically enough, because I really like dystopian books. But I discovered Jupiter Winds by C.J. Darlington. I've talked about this book for so long. Honestly, every time I talk about this series, I'm like, I need to reread it. I don't care if I just read it last week. I need to reread it. I am actually, though, due for a reread of this duology. I can't remember if it ends we're on a cliffhanger or not. And I, I feel like I have, like, put that out of my brain because there's not a third book yet. I don't know if there's ever going to be a third book. There is a prequel novella, but this is about Grey and it's set in 2160, so 2160. That sounds really <laughs> weird to say, but basically, you know, this is more on this. Okay, so let's put it this way. Anomaly, Revolutionary, Luminary, that is much more of a sci-fi dystopian with like a lot of technology and all that kind of thing. Jupiter Winds is more of the earth is falling apart. We can't live here anymore. We're going to have to go to another planet. So Jupiter it is. I don't know why. I don't remember why. I need to reread this series so bad. But it was one that I'm just like, it has my whole heart. It has my whole heart. Yep. Yep. It does. So another Christian fiction dystopian book I have is Counted Worthy by Leah E. Good. This is about Heather and her whole life just crumbles when an illegal Bible is found in her house. And this is very kind of very typical dystopian, but I like typical dystopian. I have no problem with typical dystopian. And I don't feel like too many people know about this book. So I think it's a hidden gem and it's neat. It's neat. I don't, I think it's standalone. I don't feel like there was supposed to be another book. There could have been, but it ends where it's okay, it's, so it's a standalone. So if you want a standalone, go for it. And then my last dystopian book, I have other dystopian books on my TBR, but we're not going to talk about those. We're only going to talk about ones I've read. And so the other one I have is a clean fiction dystopian book, and that is Drafted by Tommy Michelle. This is about Rev Reverie, and her little sister was taken by the government years before this book starts, and she is after justice and answers. So she's I can't say the word that she is, villagente, villagente, I don't remember how to say it. I struggled when I talked about this in the recent reads, but basically kind of Robin Hood-esque, if you will, but instead of stealing from the poor, she's murdering the rich to get answers. So yeah, not, okay, maybe not like Robin Hood actually. But I was very enthralled in this world, and book two is actually available currently on Kickstarter. The author is doing a Kickstarter where you can get special editions of this first book and of the second book. I have already backed it, and I am super excited because that means I get an early copy of book two, which, yes, 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 I would like an early copy of book two. So I will link that in the description as well if you'd like to check it out. There's the paperbacks, the hardbacks, and then deluxe hardbacks. So I am really curious because this kind of ended on the cliffhanger and I feel like this would be a cool movie. Out of all of these, I feel like this could be a movie that could go really well if done correctly with a good budget and followed the book. We are going to go into superheroes next and we're going to start with Twinopathy and Light Porter by C.B. Cook. This is a series that is still in the works. I don't know when book three is coming out. I haven't messaged the author in a while. I should message the author and ask because I am very curious about what's going to happen. This is superpowers, twin sisters, their different abilities, and then getting roped into a superhero organization. I don't need to tell myself anything more, and I want to reread them, so there's that. Then we have We Could Be Villains by Megan McCullough. I'm, no. McCullough. McCullough? No. I am so sorry. I'm terrible with names. If it's not been apparent in this video enough, I'm terrible with names. This, though, is a special edition hardcover. Look how pretty. It's got the sprayed edges. It's got... Oh, 
really cool and it's got like their little <laughs> and then and then and then oh this i forgot how pretty this was and then and then and then we have cool artwork painting picture okay so basically the premise of this though is our main girl whose name just went out of my head why do they keep going out of my head rosemary i knew that rosemary has been a big fan of this superhero movie franchise and then she finds out when she is recruited by the villain of that franchise that oh wait a second it's real this isn't a movie this is real and i don't know why the premise of that just has me so giddy because i'm not a superhero like marvel dc i don't really do follow any of that but for some reason i really got sucked in to this plot and book two actually released in july i think it was and i haven't read it yet an outrage i want to reread this book first and then i'll read book two but i have heard it was clean and then the redemption arc of our villain is great because that's one thing i really have to appreciate about this book is that she's like yes the villain yes he's an attractive guy around my age but i'm not falling for him he's a villain wow a girl who's actually like you know and and she stuck with it too that's the impressive thing i was impressed with rosemary so Okay, I need to reread this one soon, but man, I forgot how pretty this deluxe edition is. It is pretty. Another superhero book that you've heard me talk about for a while is Ignite by Jenna Therese. Look at this big, thick hardback. Like, it's not really necessarily thick. It's a good sized book, but it's really big. But this is of the premise of what if those with superpowers weren't superheroes? And things happen, and our main girl forgetting her name once again Scarlet of course I know these if I'll give myself a second I could tell y'all these but Scarlet has been attacked by someone with fire powers and she ends up getting fire powers so she turns herself into the government because that's what you're supposed to do but wait a second wait a second is the government being truly honest so this is actually an unfinished duology it does not seem like at the time book two will be releasing, but you can actually get this book, this an ebook copy of this book for free by signing up for the author's newsletter. So I highly suggest checking it out. I don't recall it ending on a massive cliffhanger, but it does have the, if there was another book, that would be great because not everything's wrapped up. But I still think it's a really fun concept and you know, super or superheroes not superheroes I think it's fun oh this is already a really good stack y'all can't see it well but it's a good stack okay then we're gonna go I don't own any of these so we're just gonna put them all together it's kind of magic ish sci-fi ish I don't know that's exactly what I have as my header for this category so book one in this list would be suspended in the stars by A. E. Hendrix this is sci-fi and I'm trying to think what I can say about this book that's not a spoiler. Because the part I really like is a spoiler. So I can't tell y'all that, obviously. But our main girl works on this airship, boat, spaceship. I, it's, it's outer space, okay? So whatever that term is, I don't know. I don't know my terms. I never watched Star Wars, Star Trek, any of them. Not my thing. So it's kind of funny that I read a sci-fi book and ended up really enjoying it. So let's see, our main girl is working on this airboat, airship. I don't remember the term used, but basically she is a part of a circus and she has, is that a spoiler? Hmm. Can I just tell you that? Can I just tell you that she works on a circus? So it's kind of like the greatest showman I've heard people say on something else and I don't remember what else but I enjoyed it and look how cool this cover is look how cool my copy I believe will be on the way to me soon I backed the author's kickstarter for book two so I went ahead and picked up book one as well in that and I'm looking forward to reading book two what else can I tell you because the thing I really like I feel like was a really big spoiler so I can't I can't share that. The main guy though, at first I wasn't sure what to think about him because he is a guard to a royal family and he kind of threatens our main girl. It's like, hey, you got to let me on your ship boat, ship thing. I don't know. And so she has to keep him on there and things happen, of course, because it's, it's a book. Things happen in books or else why it's really boring. So that's that book. I just totally butchered explaining it. I'm sorry. 
The next series I would potentially recommend to y'all would be The Hidden Mag, Mage, Magi. I've heard it pronounced multiple different ways. I asked y'all, I got multiple different answers. So I'm just going to say all of the above, and it's by Melanie Sellier. It is a four book series. Look how cool these covers are. I don't want to say this was um, me judging the books by the cover, but they're really pretty, so it didn't hurt, okay? And this is about a kingdom that has other kingdoms around it, and all of their royalty, if you will, all their young royalty, have to go to the same boarding school. I like good boarding school, okay? I don't know why I like boarding school plots and tropes and whatnot, so I ended up really enjoying this series for that element alone. There is magic, and our main girl is actually, though, while she's the royal daughter of, like, these really two powerful mag, mage, whatever we want to call them, and they actually have their own book series, which I didn't read. I read, I have read this those books out of order. I now know better, but she has no powers. She is the daughter of these two really great magicians, if you will, but she has no power. But she's supposed to be going to this boarding school for those royal children that have powers. And you know, things happen. Things happen. I liked the beginning of this series more than the end, personally, but I did still really get sucked into this world. I think I read all four books within like three, four, or five days. I got just like sucked in and it was really fun. I really like when a series does that to me. And then my other one for this kind of all over the place category would be On Wings of Ash and Dust by Brittany Wang. This is a pixies, fairies kind of plot line. I don't really have anything else like that in this whole video list lineup, if you will, but I thought I would include this one. This was really interesting because it reminded me a lot of the Tinkerbell and the Lost Treasure, mainly because of the pirate fairy at limit, but it is about our main girl who is technically royal. She and she's not the crown princess. Her brother is the crown prince. Her twin, I think it was her twin brother. And then she has just kind of like left. She's like, I'm not being a part of this. Da, 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 da. So she goes off and becomes a pirate fairy. But then she gets news that her brother is dead. Is he dead? Missing something. Something happened to her brother, and she's like, What in the world? So she goes back home, and lo and behold, she has to now take part of a competition between all the heirs of all these different fairy kingdoms to decide who's going to be the next big ruler over all of them. So it was interesting. It had like kind of like that competition games kind of thing, and I liked that a lot. I like competitions. I'm not that competitive, but I like competitions, apparently. And so I liked a lot of different elements of it. Book two is, I believe, going to be releasing towards the end of this year, or at least that was the tentative date. And funny thing about this book is it ends where it's like, okay, cool, that's great. But then the epilogue, it's like, wait a second, there was more to the story. Things are happening. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that second book soon. So for my non-magical category... I really struggled to come up with some for this category. Now, mind you, all the dystopian books, those don't have magic. The Secrets in the Mist Sky World duology, they don't have magic. A lot of things are more hereditary kind of things, like passed down gene pool wise. They're not necessarily like learning, casting, that kind of thing. So that's that. But I did want to do a non-magical category. So those few books are non-magical, but then also, a non-magical fantasy book would be Once I Knew by Victoria Lynn. This has a very cozy aesthetic, but there is some violence in it. This is about Violet, who is just an ordinary girl living in a very sleepy village when she discovers a hurt knight. He's actually a kingsman, but I'm pretty sure that's the same as a knight. And so she really doesn't want anything to do with this man because she has past history with knights, you know, family problems, and they weren't kind, and all kinds of different things. And so she really doesn't want to help this guy, but she does help this guy. But we got the amnesia trope in here, and this guy might just be someone. That's all I'm going to say. I have not read book two yet. I'm actually going to be reading book two very soon, because book three is releasing in November, and I'm really excited for that. It's very sweet, good faith content. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna let you read it for yourself. Let's move on into middle grade. Now, um, let's go off with my first one that 
I'm going to tentatively recommend, and I say tentatively because I want to see how this next book in the series goes, but the Keeper of the Lost City series by Shannon Messenger has basically a cult following, and I read all of the books that were available last year, and I see why it has a big following, because it's pretty addictive. It's very addictive, actually, very. Um, a little concerningly addictive, I won't lie, like even for myself, I was like, I am obsessed with this concept, and I don't know why. Because it's technically middle grade, upper, upper middle grade, low YA. Our main girl this series starts, I think she's about 13, 12, 12. And she thinks she is just like a normal human, but she can hear some people's thoughts. And it's really weird. Well, that's because she is actually an elf. Yeah. So that was groundbreaking news for her. And it just sets off. And now this is a series that you commit to. It's a lot of books. And actually book 9.5 is coming out. It's ridiculous. I think that's technically, is that technically book 11, 10? Because there's another point five, and like these, they're thick. Like this one <laughs> does not look that thick. But you got other books in the series that are 800 pages. So it's a commitment and it's a really neat series. I'm just hesitant about recommending them mainly because I don't know where this next book is going to go in the series because it's going to be set in our world and it's become very commonplace in secular middle grade and secular YA to add in things that go against my Christian values and beliefs. So we're going to see and in all reality if that book has stuff I don't agree with as a Christian we're going to be saying goodbye to all these books on my shelf and it's going to be really disappointing. But my values are more important than having books on the shelf that I don't agree with. So that little bunny note aside, I'm tentatively recommending these series because it is fun, it's addictive. I have content information and I will link for all the, if I can link for all the books, I will do that. I'm not sure how much space I'll have in the description because <laughs> I got a lot of books I'm talking about today and a lot of links I already have to link. But if you friend or follow me on Goodreads and then you look up these books, you will see my reviews come up and there'll be content information. I personally wouldn't recommend them for a 12 year old because they do get a little, I guess the word would be violent because the villains are willing, are adult villains usually and they're completely fine with trying to kill our main characters that are preteens and teens as the series continues. So there are moments like that and I can see why some families are like, no, we're not going to do that. But then there's other families that are totally okay with it. So it, I think it goes down to the family's preferences. I did really get sucked into this series. I read all of them <laughs> within a very short amount of time, but I'm nervous about the next book. I have to say I am nervous about it. Another middle grade series would be The Inkwell Chronicles. Book one is The Ink of Elspeth by J.D. Peabody. This is just a fun series. There is such a charm. I feel like you could pick this up at like a Barnes and Noble or something and it could hold its own against a lot of the trash that is now being published for middle grade and YA because our main two, it's a brother and sister and their father is actually a reverend. So there's not really a lot of Christian faith content, but there are values discussed, and then there is no mockery of Christianity, which is so, so common in today's world, unfortunately. And this is basically a magic ink that can be used to create these worlds, and it's just very interesting. I'm not really quite sure how to explain it. Book three is releasing next week, and I'm really glad because book two ended on a massive cliffhanger, and I was just not okay with that. I was not okay with that. And I've waited months for book three. So I'm looking forward to reading book three soon. But this was just really, it's got that whimsical childhood middle grade charm, but in a fantasy setting-ish. Like it's kind of 1950s-ish, but with magic and fantasy elements and set in England. So it's fun, it's fun. Another middle grade series for fantasy that I would recommend that I actually want to reread soon would be the 13 series by Trisha White Pribble and Jerry B. Jenkins. And this is a world where all 13 year olds are captured. 
That's all I remember about it. I remember really enjoying it. I remember it got a little like scary and suspenseful at times because of that. I don't really remember anything else. I'm sorry, my mind's blanking, but I remember enjoying it. Those are hard to find now, but I believe they are all available on Kindle Unlimited. And then my last middle grade one would be Alice and Henry and the Creatures of Tyrone by C.J. Darlington. This is from the same author that wrote Jupiter Winds and Jupiter Storm that I fangirled about earlier. And this, though, is about Allison, and she finds comfort in going to the woods behind her family's house. And then she meets this beautiful buck, this magnificent buck, and she's able to talk to him, and he's able to talk to her. And she's literally like, what in the world? And then she goes to another world, and there's, you know, all kinds of, you know, creatures. And I remember finding this really charming, very fun, very adventurous. I've seen different people compare it to the Narnia series, and I feel like that's a really, really lofty comparison. I'm not sure about that, as I've never read or watched the Narnia books or movies. I'm not sure about that. But... So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I have heard that. I'm sharing that with you. I don't know if that's true. So don't shoot the messenger. But I have heard a lot of people really enjoy this book for those kind of comparables. But I just enjoyed it by itself with no comparison to Narnia. Our stack is getting tall and teetering and I, ooh, we still have quite a few books. <laughs> For the cozy fantasy genre, I unfortunately only have one book slash series. I wish I had more. I am on the hunt to find more cozy fantasy books this fall. But I'm going to say Wormwood Abbey by Christina Bear. Y'all have been hearing me talk about this. And the funnest thing is that any friend I've had who have, has read this book was like, wow, I wasn't expecting to love it that much. And I'm like, y'all, how could you not expect to love it so much? I really hyped this book up. It was worth the hype. The cover, the vocabulary inside, the plot. It is lovely. It is lovely. It is beautiful, actually. Yes. So this is about Edith, and she's actually a writer. This is set in 1899, like that time period, but there's dragons. So that's where you get the cozy. You've got the Victorian charm, the beautiful vocabulary. There's so many words I had to look up. Up. and I just like when books do that but it's added in in such an eloquent natural way because our girl is such a smart cookie but then we also have dragons and wyverns wyverns I'm pretty sure that's how we say that word and just different things this is going to be a five book series and then the author has recently shared in her newsletter that she may be doing a spin-off series I'm excited I'm so excited book five is releasing I think it's November the cover hasn't been revealed yet as of filming this but look at all the covers lined up what's been oh they're gorgeous i've read books one and two and i'm actually tempted i own books three and four but i'm actually tempted book one just released as an audiobook and not only did the author write this book like you know write this book she also wrote music on the harp because she's a harpist for the audiobook and i just think that's the coolest thing i listened to the sample and was just like flabbergasted because it was so pretty and just fit the vibe of this world this story so well so I'm actually thinking I may listen to the audiobook reread book two even though I read it earlier this year I read it at the beginning of the year and then read book three and four and then by that time book five will probably be releasing soon that's my tentative plan but this is just lovely anyone I have heard talk about this book enjoyed this book so I hope you enjoy it too my other category is kind of allegory slash other worlds, if you will. I'm not quite sure how to put it, but we're going to start off with The Wonderland Trials by Sarah Ella. And then book two is The Looking Glass Illusion. As you can probably tell from these titles and the gorgeous covers, they are a reimagining of Alice in Wonderland. Kind of in a dystopian setting, but with a lot more fantasy sci-fi aspects and I thought it was really fun. I like Alice in Wonderland that very wacky whimsical not quite sure what's happening. I like how that is and I think I gave both of these a three and a half star rating three and a half four so yeah you might check them out. I'm scared to put them on top of the stack though. Ooh, we're playing with fire Lindsay. Poor assassin of fire and sacrifice is down at the very bottom holding the stack up. He, 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 he. I'll scooch it over so y'all can see some of it. Ah! 
Okay, I cannot bump my desk. This is going to be a disaster. My next one I'm going to put for this category would be REM or REM by Ashley Scholar. This was really interesting. If you've ever had a dream when you've got like a really high temperature, there's a similarity and I don't, I feel weird saying that, but at the same time, that is the only way I can think of describing it. So Gwendolyn's our main girl and she has been tracked down by this attractive young man with a British accent and he's telling her that her best friend is in danger that she could potentially be killed in her dreams. And she's like, this guy is off his rocker, what in the world? But then there's little things that are like, hang on, this isn't, this isn't adding up. And so she has to go into her best friend's dream and rescue her best friend from dying in her dreams. But the epilogue and the ending, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. The epilogue and the ending, how that ended, I was very like, <gasps> flabbergasted, flabbergasted on endings that feel like there should have been another book after it like Grimm. The Emerald Delusion by Jay Rhodes. This is kind of not necessarily a retelling of The Wizard of Oz but it's what happened after Dorothy left Oz and the magic of Oz is losing its color and people are turning grim and that kind of thing and our main girl gets sucked up in and how do we say her name? Er Abrel? Abrel, A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E. I'm not sure, but she's basically been sucked up and transferred to Oz, and so many different things are happening, and it's up to her to save the whole land of Oz, but again, the ending of this book is what made it, like, just like Rim, that ending made the book for me, this ending also made it for me. Well, I'm scared to add this, okay, we. Ooh, Lindsay, this is dangerous. Ooh, this is getting dangerous. I still, oh, I've got too many hardbacks coming up in this last stack. Okay, we're gonna go on into fairy tale books because fairy tale books are some of my favorites, and I think that's a really easy way. Oh man, I meant to be pulling books for the end of this video. I did not plan that well. All right, we're gonna keep going. So fairy tale books, I feel like are a really easy way to get into fantasy books because fairy tales, we love them. Yes, yes, yes. So, oh, where to start? Okay, we're gonna start with Melanie Dickerson is a very common Christian fiction author for fairy tale retellings. Personally, I like her Hagenheim. Blah, 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 I can't say it. Hagenheim. I think that's how we say it, series the best because that's the series I first read and waited for the books to come out. Personally, I like them the best. The Princess Spy, I think, is book five in this series and was one of my favorites. I need to reread them, and I'm hoping I can maybe work on that next year, but she's very common. If you don't want as much... <laughs> if you don't... If you don't want as much romance, though, as her book, they aren't heavy romance, but they do have a lot more emotions and whatnot, Melanie Sellier might be an option. So The Princess Companion is book one. This is a retelling of The Princess and the Pea. And if you really get sucked into this world like I did, you've got 20 plus books to read. It's fantastic. I am currently on the second spinoff series, and it's been great. So this series has five books and three novellas. The next series has six books. The next series, I think, has six books. And then there's a two-book duology. You're gonna be set for a while. That's what's been kind of taking my attention this past summer, was I finally read this book. I'd heard so much hype for it. And I was like, yeah, I'll get to it at some point. It's probably gonna be a fine read. It was not fine. It was fantastic. It was, it just blew me out of the water. I was just like, wow. I've never had an author that can take a fairy tale retelling. It's so many of them, because again, think about it, 20 plus books, and mind you, I've only read 15 plus, and she's just been able to make them her own and just transform the fairy tale into such unique and creative ways, and it's really just sucked me in. She just announced about her new fairy tale series she's going to be doing, and I am very curious about it because it's going to be a whole nother twist and everything, but this has been such a fun series. I have been very much addicted to this series, but it's lighter romance than Melanie Dickerson, so a lot of people who like Melanie Dickerson like Melanie Sellier and vice versa. 
I've been really into these though. I've been very into these. See my tabs? Yes. Ooh. We're getting nerve wracking here. We're gonna go with The Lady of Lenaria by Michaela Bush. This is a retelling of Rapunzel. Currently my favorite retelling of Rapunzel I've read. I've read quite a few, but I really, really enjoyed this one. This has Christian values in it, Christian characters, and then there is those who use magic, but it's very wrong. It's very looked upon as wrong. It's negative, which I appreciate. It's a very clear cut in this world. There's no doubt about that the magic they are using is evil. And this is actually the start of a series. I think there's four books out now. This is the only one that is actually a fairy tale retelling though. The other ones are more of retellings of Bible stories, which I thought was really interesting and like loosely influenced by different ones in the Bible, which I think is interesting, but I would say this is my favorite of the series so far, but it really sets the stage for the rest of the series to continue. Really, really enjoyed this one. I like really enjoyed this one. You can't really go wrong, in my opinion, with the Rapunzel retelling, but this one just was like my favorite elements of Tangled. And then just other parts I like from other classic ideas of Rapunzel and then unique ideas. And then you've got the Christian morals and values and conversations. And I really liked how it is. Our main guy in this one is not Flynn Rider. He is actually the kingdom's knight, one of their knights, and I think that was a really fun twist on the story. Okay, I'm not gonna add all of these to this stack because that's just asking for it to fall, but A Thieving Curse by Selena R. Gonzalez is a clean fiction book. I think there's a couple usages of minor, mild language, which I have listed in my content review. But our main girl is a princess, and she is having to be taken, not taken, but she has to travel to this other kingdom to marry their prince. But on the way, she gets separated from her group, and she's rescued by a dragon. But that dragon is actually the cursed beast from Beauty and the Beast. At first I was like, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Like, this is weird. He's got a tail and beady eyes and horns and, and, and wings and it's, this is odd. But when I tell you I saw this book like a movie playing in my head, I don't always get that for books, but like this one, it was just great. It was, even though I was like, what did I just get myself into? I was thoroughly invested into this book and the world and then the secrets, but then there's humor, and then I cried at the end because of a certain scene that I felt betrayed by, and then the villain in this book, you just, you gotta hate him. So speaking of the villain, and you just gotta hate, <laughs> I'm being so cautious with the stack. Book two, A Lonely Dance, is his story, and I didn't want to read his story, okay? I was like, no, I don't like him after what the actions he did in book one, no, 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 no but I read it as a buddy read and I'm glad I did because the redemption arc was very, very good. Okay, it was very, very good. This is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling though and I really like the Barbie version of that so I need to read more 12 Dancing Princesses retellings but I really liked this one too. I was stunned. I was pretty stunned I liked that one but actually in between these two books the author has a little companion novella and it's The Dragon Prince's Heart and this is the first like 130 or so pages of A Thieving Curse from our Dragon Prince's perspective, which this book is only told in her perspective. So I was so excited to see his perspective and I think it adds to the story. You don't have to read it, but I thought it was a really good bonus to the series. There is also a third book that I haven't read yet that is about her brother, the first book her brother, which I really liked their relationship, so I need to read book three soon. And then book four, I know nothing about because I was told there are massive spoilers for book three discussed on the back cover of book four. So I have avoided book four. I have avoided it. So I will read it though once I read book three. Ooh, Lindsay, this is a bad idea. Okay, I think I can talk about my last, I'm not gonna put a lonely dance up there. Even though I want to, I'm not going to because We'll see. I might. Okay. 
My last little book is another fairy tale retelling, and that would be The Reluctant Godfather by Alison Tebow. This has actually got more books in the series, but I still haven't read them yet. What am I doing? I don't know. Getting distracted by other books because too many books, not enough time. But The Reluctant Godfather is about... I just bumped my desk. Are we okay? The Reluctant Godfather is about Burndy, and he is, as the book would say, a reluctant godfather. I would also call him a sarcastic godfather. So his two charges, if you will, is this crown prince. Okay, that's normal. But he also has the charge of this poor girl named Ella who is being misused by her family. So you can see where Barney's like, okay, I'll put the two of them together. They'll be fine. They're out of, out of my hair. I can live my life baking because he really likes baking. But does things go as planned? No. No, it does not. And I love the, how this book works. This is just so fun. It's fun. It's great. It's great. So we're going to add that. Watch this be the book that topples the stack. No. I was joking. There is our stack. Can y'all even see them all? Golly, let me go get my phone and take a picture of this. Okie dokie, that is our stack. But now let me carefully take apart our stack and pull for those who want to just try. I am risking it all right now. For those who want to just try fantasy books for the first time, you're not really sure where to start, we're going to pull y'all some. Why are hardback books so heavy? That's a rhetorical question. I know why they're heavy. So for those who are new to fantasy and you're not really sure where to begin, I have eh, one, two, three, four, five, six books for you to try in different types of genres and just for you to see. So if one of these doesn't fit, read another one. If it doesn't fit, try another one. And if, if you have read all six, I got nothing. Fantasy just might not be for you. I'm going to start with Dystopian because that's what got me into fantasy. And I'm going to say The Anomaly Trilogy by Kristen McGee. Great. Wormwood Abbey by Christina Bayer. This series, it's cozy fantasy. If you like historical fiction and you are okay with the idea of dragons, try it out. The Princess Companion by Melanie Sellier. You can't go wrong with fairy tale retellings. And this is just such a fun one. Such a fun one. And it just starts you off into a fantastic world and kingdoms and series. If you like Tangled, you know, the fantastic Rapunzel movie, The Lady of Lenaria by Michaela Bush. Yes. A Thieving Curse by Selena R. Gonzalez if you want to be maybe a little more adventurous. And you're... You might be like, Lindsay, what are you getting me into? Because that's how I was with a dear friend, Sarah, when she recommended this book a thousand times. I was kind of like, what did I just get myself into? Because the main guy has been cursed to be a prince. Uh, he's been cursed to be a prince. I'm sorry, that's inaccurate. Well, it's not inaccurate. But he's been cursed to be a part dragon. And so when he gets mad and upset, he turns into a dragon. And it's a little like, huh, that's concerning. But, but... The writing of this book blew me away. So this one might be the one, maybe save this for last. If you try all the other, these other five, then try that one. Maybe. And then I'm going to say The Reluctant Godfather by Alison Tebow. You could even start with this book if you want. Like these aren't really in a particular order. But just to give you a good try of different fantasy books, I feel like these are good ones for that. And The Reluctant Godfather is short. He is sarcastic. It does not go the way you think it, it will go. And it's great. So those are for those who are just reaching out into the fantasy genre. These are the ones I'm going to recommend. Kind of like my staple pack, if you will. If you want to get into fantasy books from my recommendations, I'm going to suggest starting with these. And if one doesn't work, try another one. If that doesn't work, try another one. And, you know, go down the list. If you get down to all six and none of them were your cup of tea, maybe this genre just isn't for you. And in all reality, that's okay. Not everyone likes everything. Like, I have decided Portal Fantasy is not my thing. I am very particular on some other genres. So it's okay. Not every, We don't have to read everything. If you just want to read one genre, that is totally fine. I don't think it hurts to try to go outside your comfort zone, but it's okay to have your comfort zone and your comfort genre. Whew. 
Okay, so I think I've been talking to y'all for like an hour. I apologize, but I gave you a lot of recommendations. I don't feel like I did the best talking about all of these books, so I apologize for that, but hopefully some of these caught your eye because there's a lot of, <laughs> just looking at these stacks are lovely, just lovely. If I say so myself, now I've got to hold them all up for a thumbnail picture. Did y'all just hear the crow laughing? That crow was a paid actor. Wow. Okay. I'm a little hurt, Mr. Crow. Doesn't think I can lift all these books. I don't think I can lift all these books either. So that's, that's that. But anyway, <laughs> that was so weird. Oh, that was so weird. Anyway, that's it for this video. Here are some fantasy recommendations for you. Magical, non-magical, dystopian, fairy tale, steampunk, so many different subgenres in the fantasy umbrella. I have a sci-fi in there. I would love to do a recommendation video every other month and do like six a year. And it would be awesome if I could do like a fantasy recommendations video every year and then other genres every year. That is the tentative plan in my mind. That doesn't always happen. But I love that idea and I love sharing recommendations videos. So if you would like to request another genre, please just let me know and I will see you all next time. Please do let me know if any of these caught your eye. Have you heard me talk about these and then you're just like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. Let me know which ones. If you have any recommendations for me, feel free to leave them in the comments below. This gives you a really good idea, I think, of my taste. If you've read any of these and you also enjoyed them and you found other books that you're like, hey, Lindsay, you may also like this, go for it. I know I still need to read the Blades of Akhtar series and the Ilion Chronicles. I know. It is coming. I will read them. I, I have the first book, so I have to read them, obviously. But those are Christian fantasy books I've heard so much about. I hope I like them. I might get kicked off Christian booktube if I don't. But on that note... <laughs> On that note, if you enjoy Christian fantasy and clean fantasy books, I do share about them often here on my channel as I read them, but three of my booktube friends that also share about Christian fantasy and Christian uh, Christian fantasy and clean fantasy would be Sarah, Celestia, and Reese, and I will link their channels down below. I find out a lot of my Christian fantasy books from them and then also on Instagram, but they are some of my resources as well, so feel free to check out their channels. And I will see y'all next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogspot.com where there's a new review every Monday and Friday. I try to post a new video on this channel every Friday and then I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, Goodreads, all the many places to talk about books here, there, and everywhere. I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day, y'all. Bye!